Uh, welcome everybody. This is a committee outreach subcommittee meeting of the Northampton Police Review Commission. Uh, today is Wednesday, December thirtieth, twenty twenty. This meeting is starting right now. Uh, we're recording on Zoom, and we're gonna start with the uh roll call. Noah, please, can you lead us? Yeah, Javier. Here. Dan. Present. And Carol. Here. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. So, as you know, um, we are a newly formed subcommittee. Uh, and, you know, our main charge is to do uh, why community outreach, try to get, get the voices of those who are not uh are not able to come to the meetings they don't have you know either the disposable time the disposable uh resources to be able to be comfy connected to the internet or to be able to call into our meetings um then you know better this part how do we just accept the charge um so essentially we just state exactly what the charge is and then just say we accept it that's <laughs> So it's a really simple, like for organizational stuff, it's really easy, but um, I also did include an, in the agenda item, just a chance for us to discuss what some of these mean as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so our actual charge um, for this group um, is that we can that we would coordinate, um, coordinate speakers to the commission and subcommittees from different local organizations. Th these are things that we are going to do limit, not mm -hmm. limited to, and not necessarily doing all of these things, but that the bulk of our work would include these things. So handle coordinating speakers, um, build connections with different groups and organizations who serve marginalized communities within Northampton, working with those groups to coordinate collecting statements from people who do not have access to the means to weigh in during public comment periods, work uh, to find ways to safely collect statements from individuals who require some degree of anonymity out of fear of reprisal, prior victimization or approval, uh, prior victimization or abuse, et cetera, and develop recommendations to make the meetings and the ultimate report more accessible, including language, disability, understanding, and et cetera. Um, so that's our- Would, our, would we consider that our charge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And do we have to vote to take it or, I mean, you know, we have been talking a lot about the, the uh, position in rules or not rules. Uh, we decide the rules of the subcommittee. I would say we, you know, if if nobody is against it, we just accept the charge. Yeah. Excellent. That... We are so good. <laughs> uh, election of chair. Uh, I mean, we don't necessarily have to have a chair system. We just have to have someone who's responsible to, uh, responsible for like setting the meetings, agendas and things like that. Um, and getting those to Noah on time. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can I can do that. I know. Well, Dan, you are in a little of a pickle right now in relation to your co-chair of the full commission being gone. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 Carol, I I mean I know you're extremely busy teaching and doing a lot of stuff. Taking care of my heart. <laughs> Take it. I was I was gonna answer that, but I'm always yeah. co self conscious about this being recorded, so I don't want to sort of just yeah. ask for it. Yeah. I'm okay, just health issues. That's all. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, yeah, I would be willing to do it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, so I do we... think we have to. I don't know if we have to because if it's not an official chair, I don't know if we have to call roll to elect somebody. <laughs> um. I would like to nominate Javier. Seconded. <laughs> Noah? Noah, can you call roll for us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Javier? <laughs> Guess so, yeah. Dan? Yes. Carol? Yes. Wow, okay. The, the roll is accepted, I guess. Awesome. So, uh, discussion of charge topics. So then, copy paste, copy it, and paste the 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 description on the chat. Yeah. Um. Um. I. 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 So then, have you have you been in touch with future speakers? Um. I've been in touch with a few different people. Um. So like on the fifth, um, Rachel Bromberg, 
um, from the um, the reach out response, and she's the co-founder of. I'm forgetting the name for the international mobile response. I should really remember it. It's written down somewhere. Um, <laughs> I have it, but um, but like just reaching out to her. Um, there are a few other speakers, um, but it's also like trying to balance and like take into account like when the like the full commission says we don't know something versus when subcommittees say they don't know something and want to know and like trying to figure out how to balance when and where people should speak. Um, but it might also be that you know, we work a little more closely with the subcommittees to ask who they want mm -hmm. to sort of handle some of that as well. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, a lot of this has just been sort of um, when people have recommendations or um, <laughs> when, um, you know, there's the, like an opportunity just presents itself um, and you grab somebody. Um, mm -hmm. um, so let, let me, because if, 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 if we approach it from that point of view, I mean, this would also would um, sort of w would be part of reaching out also if we want any city department to to come and talk or or that would still go through you yeah if, if people want to invite like the the city like city departments we can i mean we can reach out to them i don't think there's anything that we would need to do that would allow or disallow that like for subcommittees or for the general commission yeah i ju just want to be clear with that because i to be honest i as as i thought about our role was when it towards um not in favor of those who already have the an easy way to get to the table mm -hmm. but instead of us being able to come out with the strategies and and, and certainly i'm in, in 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 this portion of it i will rely a lot on on carol and how to approach a qualitative Mm -hmm. uh system to be able to gather mm -hmm. testimonies in in different formats right mm -hmm. so that's the reason why I, I just want to clarify that so we would also be the ones if sub subcommittee wants to talk to you know they they had been talking about having the cops uh that would also go would go through us or or not i, I don't at least from my own perspective i don't think it would go through us okay yeah, I don't think so either. It doesn't it doesn't kind of fit with it may be that we want to talk with departmental people, but um it doesn't seem to match with the charge. Yeah, I think it would be if yeah. we wanted to bring in people from outside of the city. Um so like um thinking the folks from the Northampton Recovery Center or the um Recovery Learning Center or um you know, there, there are a number of different groups uh, yeah. either. Yeah, let me, yeah. Yeah. Let, yeah, let me give you another example. I spoke with a former student of mine who had a position at the, she's working another job now, but she was a program director at the Center for Women in Community at UMass and they serve all of Hampshire County. You know, you know what their mission is, you know, they have a hotline, um, they do a lot of, um, education about diminishing violence and they're they're uh, in Africa house they really are committed to um, all genders and you know all uh, racial identification in terms of supporting people who have um, been um, sexually assaulted or you know subjected to sexual violence so I asked you know whether it seemed sensitive enough if we wanted to contact them, to see what, see if anybody wanted to talk with us about their experience with the police. And the initial, the initial um, suggestion was to talk to the current director and see if any of the volunteers who either work on the hotline or go into the police, go in with the person. They, they, they would be sort of eyewitness. So that if it's um, not possible to talk with people who have, who are clients of the program, you know, interviewing some of the volunteers who have been there at the police, whatever police, especially. In North 
Northampton, please. Although it was also suggested that um, if I talked to the director and, and asked if there might be any people who've come through the program who would like, who feel like it would be empowering for them in their recovery to speak with us about their experience with police, that might also be possible. So that's one example of going through the, you know, the um, advocacy agency mm -hmm. and reaching people who otherwise they're not going to show up on our screen here. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I, I was sort of clear about that. I just want to get out of the way the fact that hopefully others don't expect that we go and look for people who, you know, um, it's, 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 so we're talking about sort of the, like Sean Donovan and others that have right. come to right. talk to us. Right. Um, so we, on our agenda, we don't have public comment. But I would like if, you know, we have, Patrick is here, Yapping is here, Josie was here and left laughing. Um, if if any, in during this conversation, anybody here feels that they have something to add to it, mm -hmm. uh, we would really appreciate if you raise your hand and I can call on you. Um, I just want to put that there because we are such a small group that I think uh, anybody who's here, it's because they are really interested in, and may, they may have something to say about this. Uh, so I don't have a lot of experience, Carol, and then in relationship to sort of uh, qualitative approach. Mm -hmm. So it's something that, that I would like to get you guys, your two cents about what kind of approach you think we can we can we can do and also are we working to bring these testimonies to the regular um uh, meetings in the in 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 if it's a recording uh, on a recording to play during the regular full committee meetings or are we working towards the second big um uh public meeting that we're gonna have so that's that's the things that I'm putting on the table for for you guys to to sort of yeah. to give your opinion. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, would, I would say broadly and unhelpfully, yes. <laughs> um, so I think part of this is going to be collecting public statements that shape where we go with our recommendations, and that's going to be something that has to happen um, probably outside of just the public hearings, um, and that we would need to make that available to the commission you know, also outside of necessarily those public comment periods. Um, but I think there is, and I think this is gonna be something that we need to balance because I think there's something important to be said for actually playing that those recordings for people like at the same time that they're hearing other people speak, like, because, you know, cognitively that's when we're, we make those associations, right? It's, it's not the same process. Um, okay, right. And, and, you know, we weight things differently. Um, you know, that's just get the human computer interaction. We weight things differently when we don't see a person behind, um, behind them. So I think it's important to sort of have those, maybe some of them or some selection of them, or, um, and this is something that we did before where we, um, where Sean spoke on behalf of a group of people and sort of gave the sort of the cliff notes of it, right? He summed up you know, here are the common things, here's an example, here's a common theme, here's an example, um, based on the people that he's worked with um, in his role. And so sort of, there's that, there's that part to it. Um, but I do want to actually make space, you know, intentionally for people to make public comment, who are not necessarily, <laughs> who wouldn't do it otherwise. And that could be, um, you know, it, it could be synchronous, it could be asynchronous. Um, mm -hmm but to really yeah. to hone in on that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's another issue. When I have done studies uh, that are qualitative and meaning, you know, in-depth, semi-structured interview, it's not just a survey with question, answer this question, answer that question, just sort of building on it, letting the, the informant or the interviewee guide where the questions go. Um, and then, you know, that's even recorded or that's written out in a, you know, like their testimony. But, you know, when I've done studies, I've often paid people. And there's always the issue of how much you pay. I remember when I was getting my doctorate at BU, 
uh, the sociology department thought that I was paying too much. And I was like, what? And they thought that $30 for a two hour interview was too much because it was gonna compel vulnerable people to become vulnerable in, you know, because I was paying them to be vulnerable. So they, they thought that was a little too much. They thought I should reduce it to 15, but I didn't. These were these are people who were low income who were very, very open and they were also very gra grateful for money. Now, Javier, earlier at the commission, you had raised this issue of um, reimbursement. So, I mean, is that something we wanna look at here? Um. Well, yes. So two things. So the first time that this came uh, as, 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 a, as a conversation topic to the commission was that if we were having, so this is the thing, if we were having people of color mm -hmm. coming here, uh, somebody like Barbara Love or others that they have, they not, they are not only professionals and remarkable in their fields, but also they have lived experience because of the race uh skin color that we should we should not expect pro bono i mean mm -hmm. people of color they should stop having to have the 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 duty of you know yeah. enlightening others in their right, own right exactly races, right yeah. mm -hmm. so but this is this in the, in in from that to what you just mentioned um it's it's a complicated issue because mm -hmm. Uh, you know, because we we optics first at all. Yeah, um, yeah. that's true. Yeah, we the the, the fact that uh, if if we come with, I mean, optimistic, if we come with fifty well documented testimonies, uh, written testimony, audio files, even a video, maybe, and those are have a tendency to one side. And those people were were compensated not because of the testimony, but because of their time. That can be misconstruct. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's that's one issue. The second issue, it's uh, any any if you know we we were just starting to talk about it, but if any kind of compensation is going to play, that's something that needs to be dealt with. The city council president and the mayor, yeah, um, and that's and certainly that's going to go through the city soil door too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it gets a little more complicated because I mean we asked I asked about this so Dana and I asked about this pretty early on, um, and the response was basically the city doesn't have a mechanism to pay speakers, and it doesn't have a sort of like reimbursement mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, so like, you know, doing. <laughs> doing payment for taking part in a focus group or study uh doing interviews all of those things there's not a way for the city to pay for that by itself um so at that point things would have to come from outside organizations um you can ask you know sort of like could the city pay for child care for a commissioner and so we're going outside of the city to look for that funding as well um so i think one of the one of the things that you know, it, it complicates it because even if we wanted to and we found a way to do it that we felt was equitable um and that that would be translatable pretty easily to anyone who who looked at what we were doing you know that we then have to we also have to have a corresponding mechanism for the city to do that and there just isn't yeah now. yeah and then when you go with private sources then it really does tinge the whole thing yeah yeah and and, and and you know and and the fact and I just want to be clear with this and taking advantage that we are on record. It's or it's worrisome that the city doesn't have a system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because from my point of view, that means that either they have had all these experts or usually upper middle class or rich white guys coming to talk to the city. Mm -hmm. So the issue has never been there so this is the first time that we're talking yeah. about yeah. somebody serving in a commission that <clears throat> needs help to be able to take care of their children we go back again talking about uh privilege right 
And it's and it's even sadder from the point of view that I would like someday somebody in the, uh, serving in the city council that raised the that has that problem that mm -hmm. is is a mother of three that works one or two jobs and and need to, and, and is still serving in the city and getting elected, but because nothing of that exists, mm -hmm. that kind of people are cannot cannot have even you know the starting point of my idea to be able to to get to that point so. You know, um, and this speaks to the fact that I just I, I'm saying this just because the fact that, as Dan said, the city doesn't have this, that doesn't make it right. That that doesn't make it yeah. appropriate. I don't feel it's it's I don't think it's the right answer from the city. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, when when somebody like like this comes in front of the of the city, and I'm assuming that this. You know, the answer came from the mayor and the city, uh, city council president. Uh, just from the mayor's office. So, when an answer like that comes from the mayor's office, and doesn't, and that answer doesn't come with a, but what we could do in the future, is worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think at least in in my dealing with with like the mayor's office, I think a lot of it is framing the the question and this is this is you know they're they're doing exactly what they're doing exactly what we're asking which is here's a question please give us a response and they give a response and i think framing the question i'm slowly getting better at this is framing the question <laughs> asking for a response and assuming that the response is a negative asking what are the solutions and i think that's the process uh, uh -huh. yeah. because then then you know there's hopefully the, the commitment, because otherwise they're doing exactly what the bounds of their responsibilities are mm -hmm. respond. Never uh, any revisions. Yeah. There's never any out of the box thinking. You know, something that occurred to me, Javier, when you were talking is that, and let me just throw this out. I don't know whether it's possible, but putting an addendum, you know, there's so many interesting, provocative process issues that we are going to notice this being one, uh, along the way that are unintentionally inhibiting of people without power or voice, preventing them from being in the narrative. Um, I wonder if we could just think about doing an addendum piece at the end of our study, like when we get to the final report. I, I think you know, we where, where, where we address process pieces and really this is a structural piece, right? The structural piece in the study you know just to write i'd be happy to work with somebody on right you know writing you i know, i would you, i would yeah. love to do that with you yeah 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 and i, I think and i is, think and i think that's right and then i was gonna say this is this is something you know similar to what happened earlier where it was can we have translation services and mm -hmm. well, there was a whole back and forth between like well no we don't have that and you can't use the funds for it and then it became oh well we do sort of have this other mechanism in place that we were planning on doing and then moving forward so like getting to that point um so having translation services and the live captioning enabled for some of those meetings and or the the sorry not live captioning but the live tra the live automatic transcription available and in integrating those services and um so i think that's going to be a big part of what we end up doing, no matter what we do, <laughs> as we're sort of poking and asking these questions, is that, you know, hopefully that also leads to solutions either being proposed or being elaborated on that the city's already been working on, um, and maybe fast tracking some of those things yeah. so that, you know, we get, um, even if it's not implemented by, you know, by the time we wrap up in March, that it's still, <laughs> Um, that is still there. Yeah. Right. yeah. Do you two things? The first one is related to this, which is, <clears throat> I think that addendum and or or even a separated brief mm -hmm. report about things uh, issues that will run into it. Mm -hmm. Right. Because uh, uh, being sent to the to the mayor and the city council, I think would be important. Mm -hmm. um, as I said time ago, I mean, I learned in Chile. I never learned this until I came here. But early on, when I came to the U.S., I learned that because I'm a brown Hispanic man with an accent, 
and I get pulled over by a cop, my hands cannot leave the steering wheel. Right. right. But that's something that I know, right? That's something that people, men of color know, women of color know. But th that's something that a, a, a white dude doesn't, doesn't necessarily know. Mm -hmm. So I think that first, uh, sort of as, as more than them would at least uh, deliver the information that people looks like it. I'm operating from a place of good faith. They are not even thinking about because for me, it's extremely difficult to understand how the city doesn't have yeah. uh, this, this, the services of translation and and the, and the subtitles and the, and the all the text thing already going on from years. I, I it's, it's hard for me to understand why, mm -hmm. because it's not that we came here and we sort of revolutionized how we see things it's it's what's obvious from the get-go um but i think that's good and the other thing is i was thinking about going back a little bit to the topic and how how do we bring those voices and how more how we bring it how we present those voices in front of the commission um maybe one of the things that we would like to we want to do and this is a question for you too is that in the same way how we have a repository for documents, every time that we present a, a, a testimony, either a written video or audio, is presented for the first time during the structure public comment or the big public comment meeting. But that testimony gets added to the repository in a specific folder. Mm -hmm. So if anybody in the commission wants to go back to that testimony, would be able to do it later. But I like the idea in what you said, Dan, uh, in relationship to there is nothing as to listen in the moment, in the context. Um, and, and, you know, and, you know, people send sometimes their meetings go in some direction after they hear somebody talking about certain things in certain mm -hmm. way. Yeah. So I, I think that would have some value. So I would like to hear your thoughts, Carol Dan, about about maybe a repository after we do this, so we we keep it accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and this is one of the the things that I was thinking about um, for anonymity, um, and that's one of the reasons why um, <clears throat> we reached out to um, the council of president who came back with um, that there's nothing that requires us to identify people who speak. Um, we are not the city council, so we are not bound by those same rules, but that, you know, the, the less you have for identification, the more, the more opaque it becomes, the less accountability there is, and there's, there's concerns about legitimacy. Um, but I think we also do need to balance that, you know, the, <laughs> that there is a real fear. <laughs> I mean, beyond just ability, that there's actual fear of reprisal, right? Like the Northampton police have a lawsuit that's current. Like that, that was just filed a little while ago about reprisals from someone who was trying to hold police accountable and recording them mm -hmm. um, with, with his phone and him being, as a black man being harassed, uh, um, pulled over frequently. Um, there's also um, another case that's a little older um, where um, a person who brought a suit against the city and against the police department um, reported being harassed by the police repeatedly, um, being followed, um, having officers come up to his camper um, and disturbing him, things like that. So like th there's a, even if it's not necessarily <laughs> an actual um, practice, those are, those are both allegations. There's nothing that's been like proven, but just the allegations themselves mm -hmm. may lead other people you know, if it was just me, I'd be like, well, why do I want to, <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about my own personal experience with the police and have them, you know, then do the same to me. Um, so thinking about what, we, um, and this is one of the agenda items is just like, well, we have to talk about anonymity and decide what a policy is for that, um, or what options we're giving people and what level of anonymous are we saying, right? Because we can we can obviously just not include a name <laughs> and we could have some other identifier um, for these people. Um, but, you know, if they're giving examples, if, you know, are we also using video, but 
but blurring faces? Are we, you know, distorting voices? You know, th there's there's also levels of anonymity that we also have to consider. But I I think one thing, and and um, Noah is now in charge of our uh, shared drive. I think everyone got an email about that, so we should have all of the documentation and things. My goal was also to have that as a publicly accessible resource. So something that any member of the public can look into and see. And so if we had a repository of those um, of those recordings, I would love to see it there so that it's maintained. It's maintained by the city. It's in a space that the city maintains and that will go on indefinitely. Um, some of the other things, especially because if we have recordings of the, <laughs> we have recordings of the public hearings, we have recordings of the commission meetings and those public statements. So those are all recorded somewhere and publicly accessible that, you know, I would like these to be included and therefore saying that these voices are equal <laughs> um, to these other people. So my hope is that it would be um, publicly accessible from the get go, but it's also taking a while to, to make sure that we have a space on the city website for it and that we have a, a means to share these drive like these drive files publicly, um, given the structure of the city's file storage system. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing something like more of a podcast rather than a video? Um, I mean, for me, I think video tends to be more compelling. Oh, but, sure. But it's also, um, it also makes people more vulnerable. <laughs> so it, it's more, I think, for myself, it's what people are comfortable with, mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of collecting these and how we're collecting them as well, right? So one thing could be videos of people. It could also just be audio recordings from individuals. And we have, you know, a playlist from multiple days or however sort of divide and splice those up. Um, you know, if we have multiple groups that we're working with that are doing the recordings for us because they're already in those spaces, um, and they've already built those relationships with people, you know, maybe splicing them together so that we have um, have that information, you know, across groups. And it could be making like, I mean, it's we could organize it by theme, by topic, by interviewer, by location. <laughs> um, there, there's a lot, there's a lot in there, um, but. I think we're we're also bound by like before we can determine what form it'll take, we have to see what we can get. Um, yeah, what can be held? Yeah. Right. Well, I I would even uh, even that I think is too stiff. Beyond the most important thing, which is, for and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel that the most important. It's not necessarily the decision if you do it out of video or written. I think we should be open to either of three, right? Mm -hmm. And when something is written, we should have somebody doing an audio file of it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but for me, the most important thing is that we come with the basis of what's going to the, the, sort of the guidelines of any testimony. So it doesn't matter if it's written, doesn't matter if it's video or audio, we come with guidelines mm -hmm. and possible questions or whatever we're going to approach in a way that it's it's universal for any kind of medium that is going to be used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and being honest, I relied a lot on you, Carol, for that. Okay, sure. <laughs> because yeah. I feel if we have good guidelines to be able to give to people to the groups working with affected communities for us when we're reaching out to others mm -hmm. uh having clear guidelines is going to keep at least it's going to give us a way better chance to get the same the same amount of information across the board mm -hmm. and also it's gonna it's gonna help us to be clear what we're what what we're looking for Right, right. Right. So I, I feel that the most important thing that as as a commission we should do first is to lay out the foundation a foundation document, one pager that we can give anybody. We can give to Sean Donovan and mm -hmm. he will read a, a paragraph 
a, a specific bullet points and that's going to lead a testimony. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, <coughs> I have yeah. two, two concerns with that. So the first one is that, you know, in, in terms of equitability and like I've, I've fought pretty, pretty hard against like posing a question to get comments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that, I mean, first off that question presupposes an answer. Um, but besides like a general, like we're from the Northampton Policing Review Commission, this is our stated purpose. We are collecting public comments. Would you like to make a comment? Mm -hmm. um, because if we go beyond that, and, mm. and this, you know, may, when we start asking real questions, then it becomes really important to think about the questions and thinking about other research projects that I've done, other studies, other like, you know, no matter what it is, your question informs the answer. <laughs> and well, we'll that's 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 true. It, but you know, listening to Javier, something else occurred to me, which is, and I agree with you, Dan, that we don't want to presuppose. You, you don't want to have too many questions. The open ended. When I've done interviewing, it's really I tell the person, you know, what I'm what I'm curious about, what I'm really want to, you know, and it's in a, operate from a social justice perspective. What I'm really wanting to hear in terms of their experience, their lived experience in X, Y, or Z situation. And you know how they represented themselves. You know what happened, and you know so it's very open ended. But one of the things you said about a framework, I it occurred to me that not from our perspective as the data gatherers, but from the perspective of vulnerable people, it's pretty. I think it's pretty important at the beginning to tell them some parameters where we're not expecting them to go deeper if they're not wanting to, more personal. It's protection for them too because. When I, when I resettled refugee youth here and did interviewing, and believe me, those folks who had lived under the Pol Pot regime in Cambodia had some horrific survival stories to tell. We said, my former boss and I uh, were both clinicians. We, we knew that A, in that instance, we had to debrief with them. We had to find some, we fed them and we had to have some debriefing about how was it to talk to us about that. Um, I don't think we have to do that here, but I think it's probably good at the beginning to make a comment about, you know, we absolutely value the fact that you're willing to talk with us, you know, because we are interested in your experience. We only have our own experience, but, you know, we, we caution you to share only as much as you feel is okay under the circumstances so you won't overwhelm yourself because when we're done with this, we may not see each other again. Um, and we really want to honor your story, but invite you to not completely destabilize yourself or, or go back and revisit your trauma um, because of our asking you to share with us. So please consider the depth of what you're willing to share here. So I think some framework like that is probably good. Yeah, and I, I don't think that, I think we should also go into this I mean, having a statement to say like, this is the, you know, whatever you say will become a public part of a public record. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, to also have a, and it, this is just sort of general, anytime you do something to have like a redaction policy or, or a way for them to say, you know what, I thought I was comfortable, but don't you, share that, but don't share that. Please remove that. I changed so, my mind. Yeah. Right. So, um, so, when I, so when I was talking about, uh, uh, the doc this, this is what I was talking about like questions mm -hmm. first I was not talking about have you ever been targeted no and in fact one of the things that I have been promoting Dan is your idea of rather than question a narrative right mm -hmm. but the question that we have to ask are this is this is are uh, the three things three ways that this is going to be chaired are you comfortable with that mm-hmm mm -hmm. right and that's something that needs to be in a one pager for anybody mm -hmm. who is going to do it. It has to read the person, the, the, the first paragraph and, and the first, uh, it's going to be, as you said, it's going to be pull the record. It's going to be read in, in a meeting and it's going to be stored. So are you comfortable with this? Mm -hmm. And the reality is that, you know, sadly, probably after, <laughs> 
after you read that, a lot of people are not going to be willing to do it. But we have to be transparent with that. And, I, and that's sort of the, the question that I was talking about in, in a one pager. Because at the end of the uh, at the end of the day, after you're done explaining what what it is, the how it's gonna be chair, and you start a conversation. After that, the interviewer doesn't do anything else, mm-hmm. pretty much. Mm-hmm. So, um, and you know, explaining the, the nature of the commission in really simple in a really simple two sentences, and. And, and setting the context, uh, so when when we ask if, they, if the person feels comfortable moving forward, giving their own narrative, it's just them talking about and having in mind uh, what the commission is doing, right? What is complicated, and for me, I'm still having an ext- extremely hard time thinking about it. We are in a small city. Yeah. It's, this is not like a New York. This is not right. like Chicago, where right. in a day you're going to have 100 incidents, mm-hmm. 200 incidents with the police. By the end of the month, you're going to have thousands of incidents with the police, right? So even my <clears> concern, <throat> it's and I, it's, I, I swear that I still don't know what to do. It's even when we're not using names, even when we're changing name of places, because of 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 the of the number of incidents, would be really easy for a police officer to figure it out. Identify, oh, I, yeah, identify. It'd be extremely easy, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and that's that's one of my concerns. And I have been thinking about about that in, uh, for my life. I, I honestly, I haven't come to a place that I can have. I feel confident that I have an answer to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, it's going to be a lot of sort of a lot of sort of finding people who are willing to engage with that sort of that risk. Um, I think we could, you know, and this is maybe something that we we get at the public comment, but also something that I'm actually really interested in because I don't, I'll be completely upfront, I don't really care how people feel about the police as a department. Mm-hmm. They're much more about how they feel about what would make them safe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so it can also, like, we can put the emphasis more on, you know, mm-hmm. because all, like we are a small city and also a lot of the, and I mean, we're going to collect a bunch of these things and hopefully there'll be more comments towards it. But like our experiences, a lot of times aren't like the official, like, oh my God, I had an officer who attacked me and yada, yada, yada. Like, it's a lot of things where it's like, well, and I'll, I'll share this one. I mean, uh, you know, at Pride, while I was in a dress with a broken high heel, <laughs> um, <laughs> walking through the parade grounds, I had two officers follow me and my partner, like through the parade ground and not like, oh, wow, they're just heading in the same direction. Like we're making turns and weaving and they're following us, right? It's also happened outside of like the, the spa where you go and have a spa night <laughs> and you leave and like police flip on the first light to watch you walk and then follow like followed us all the way back to my apartment um oh. you know like and <clears throat> there's a disconnect between okay like oh that's really bad you should report that first off I'm not going to turn around and be like ah let's march up to the people following you and can I get close enough to see your name can I take a picture of your mm-hmm. badge mm-hmm. Um, you know or to, to engage in those because not to say each of those incidents would have resulted in something horrible, but that's that's the start of the escalation <laughs> that leads to something negative. So I think a lot mm-hmm. of the comments might might in fact be just, I had an officer who harassed me in a way that I'm not necessarily gonna be able to report. There's no account, like who do you report? Like, um, you know, I think like I was at um, a march a few years ago and an officer followed followed me with his hand on his weapon. Yeah. Well, yeah. The parade until two of my white friends stood in between, <laughs> and then mm-hmm. he backed off. Um, but like, how do you report that? <laughs> um, so I mean, there are those examples, but I think what what's much more meaningful is to go to people, and maybe they've had these experiences, maybe they haven't, but to say, what would make you feel safer at mm-hmm. night? Mm-hmm. Um, what would make you feel yeah. safer? you know, in general, like in your life, what would make you feel safer being in downtown Northampton? 
because I would be surprised if the answer was more police officers with weapons and wasn't something more like, well, mm -hmm. I see a lot of people who are unhoused. Um, you know, wouldn't it be great if they had spaces that were safe to go to that didn't involve them becoming public spectacles? Um, <laughs> you know, where people just walk by and then the police harass them for just existing in a park. Um, so I like really like that, Dan. And, you know, again, I'm going back. I haven't done research uh, for a while, you know, after I got my last degree, that was it. <laughs> but, um, you know, traditionally when, I mean, this is traditional practice when, when we're reaching out to people who are super vulnerable and and really being appreciative of their willingness to share towards the end of the interview, it's really important to put them in an authority position. And so I like your idea of that being a question, a very central question uh, about what, what would be needed for you to feel safe and really, you know, really bringing that out. And, and, and almost as an ending note, you know, because it leaves them feeling a little more empowered too. So. I think the other thing that we could do, uh, and thinking this when, you know, I've done like survey research and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, when I was at grad school and like, you know, doing these sort of like the outreach, like you always want to have that sort of like contact backup and right. like sources right. as well. So like looking, you know, as we're working with these other groups, you know, across the city to say, all right, what can we put together as it's not necessarily going to be like, you know, a care package, but something that it that does have. So like, okay, we've just talked about some sensitive things. If you need help, mm -hmm. here, here are resources. You know, if you found that this was a really triggering experience, okay, here's, you know, counseling services that are available through the city um, or like emergency counseling. Um, here's, you know, giving them um, information about like the recovery learning center because they have that. Um, um, yeah. Oh my God respite they have like respite, respite. yeah the AFIA, um, the AFIA program yeah yeah thank you so <laughs> like um those like just making sure that that information is readily available for whoever's mm -hmm. whether it's us in some way or another group um or another person right do we know when the next uh public um how you how we call it public speaking meeting the public hearing public hearing we don't know yet okay so as we know we cannot work collaborative on a document outside this meeting right every time that i think about that i remember alex <laughs> so um i would like to if that's okay, Carol, if you can have the first bite of it and maybe draft something and we can take a look in our next meeting. You mean you mean what we have? Yeah, I mean sort of a one sort of a one, yeah. one pager yeah. that, what we discussed the issues we discussed tonight. Yeah, I mean mostly the one page it's sort of a one pager. Mm -hmm. um, sort of a, a starting point for the draft of the one pager that we can give any we can use ourselves or we can give to any like Sean Donovan or Jose Adastra or anybody who is actually working with people affected, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they would be able to use that to um to the to you know to create the content that we would need to be able to to have those voices on the table. Mm -hmm. Um. Do, do, it, it, would that well i think idea? that's a great idea and then we could get back from them yeah yeah so if it would be okay for you carol to have the first the sure sort of, sure the just uh just the what our intention is you know what our what the protections are around yep around our speaking with you share you know you having you share with us yeah and we can and we can sort of trying to get it done in the next meeting mm -hmm. just what type it up and then submit it to uh noah yeah yeah okay the, i think the other thing to think about as well is who we want who we can work with yeah um, as well because and this is something that um that i've thought a lot about and i think elizabeth has brought up in meetings before as well is that we are focused like we've talked a lot about 
like these marginalized groups, but who are they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I think we need to get to that. Yeah. Yeah, and like how how can we reach out? So we've identified, um, you know, so unhoused populations, and we've identified people um, with mental illnesses, um, or that are labeled as that. Um, undocumented we, folks. Yeah, so we've identified as um, undocumented people, and in general, people of color who we've also not heard a lot from, um, that are residents of Northampton. Granted, there's a small number of residents of Northampton. Um, like we're we're a small we're a small number you know Northampton is pretty white in general um, as is most of Massachusetts but um, to bring in those voices and um, you know I don't know and this is one of the things I don't know what other groups we want to bring in um, or reach out to and, uh, sorry no I do um, so uh, survivors of domestic assault or violence um, again might be good to bring in but. Um, aside from, I know the uh, former city councilor Lisa Klein um, has done a lot of work. I've talked with her about different models that have um, of restorative justice that have worked um, mm -hmm. for for those survivors um, or victims of intimate par partner violence in different contexts. But there always is a different context, and I don't know all of the groups in this area that work with people um, and. The other part to add complexity to this is that there are groups that do work with these populations, but who maybe are not the best or whose practices in the past. Um, yeah, I, I was going to bring that. <laughs> sort of bring bring police and like a very authoritarian um, and institutional response that is not necessarily, um, it's not something that people necessarily trust. And so also thinking about those groups and if we're bringing them in, how we want to do that, um, recognizing that, their relationships. Yeah, that's complicated because it, at the end of the day and being doing a full disclosure, we what we are not looking to do is to keep the status quo of that those relationships and those dynamics. <laughs> and for me, that's where the conflict with organizations that are proactively partnering with the cops Mm -hmm. um were and and that was one of the reasons when uh pamela pamela shorts yeah pam shorts yeah. pam shorts uh -huh. came to talk yeah. to us yeah for me it's it's vital that uh somebody who is affected by uh, uh, a disability or somebody who is a, a sexual assault has the power for feedback to people who are quote unquote helping that person right and right. a lot of models that are now in Northampton they lack of accountability in yeah. that regard yeah. greatly in a, in a really, really concerning way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I shared then your, your concern too about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can think of a few examples. Yeah. Um, does anybody know what currently is happening through Casa Latina. I mean, I used to have contact with them many, a couple of decades ago, and I don't know where they would fit on the spectrum. I I just to meet with one of the advocates from Casa Latina like a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. uh, being honest with you, I I would be able to reach out, but I, 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 I would be able to reach out, but I don't know if they're still working. Mm-hmm, okay. Um, but I, I would I would be able to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things that we can do next meeting, I'm trying to think of the agenda for the next meeting, okay. mm -hmm. would be having a sort of report back from uh, each of us about th which organizations we think uh -huh. in Northampton we should uh, reach out and, and sort of partner with them, including activists, not just, you know, uh, including individuals doing this work by themselves and organizations that are in line with not uh, just reenacting again and again and again mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. pervasive system that we have nowadays. And maybe we can do that in the first section of the meeting, if that's okay with you. In the second section, we can workshop the document that you would draft, uh, Carol. Mm-hmm. 
with mm -hmm. the, with the goal that we would be done with the document that next meeting mm -hmm. to be able to just to roll out and start doing this because that's what we need. Right. Right. One other thing to think about as we're sort of setting this up is that um, while folks didn't want to be on another subcommittee, understandably, um, like Alex reached out um, and I think other commission members would be willing to do like what if you get if we if we can develop action items that they can do and just this is a task go do it um they they would respond well to that so just thinking about as we're sort of building this up and this isn't something that we'll have ready to go next week right but <laughs> um just in in the future that it also doesn't have to be just us doing mm -hmm. some of this this work and outreach too um Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully, after we come out with the document, we're yeah. going to roll out the document. Every Alex can get it. Any other can get it because we're setting a floor and how we gather information. After a couple of weeks, we're going to have to do changes to the document, depending on the feedback that we're going to be getting. Right. Um, but honestly, I, from my point of view, hopefully next meeting is the only meeting that we're talking like this. And after that meeting, we're just reporting back about testimonies. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a good timetable, Javier. Yeah, I think we got to get down to it. Yeah. Um, to the other thing is, who's going to follow up with uh, the other issue that came up here earlier tonight is what's realistic in terms of storage? You know, the tech, the tech part. Yeah. So I can. Like, That's you. Is that you, Dan? Yeah. yeah I mean, whatever we whatever we come up with. Um, the only thing that we'll need, and this is something to think about, is that for the anonymity, mm -hmm. um, we need to, for just just the commission's use of something that's not public, is we still need to track who said what um, in case somebody makes a statement and it's anonymous, so we de-identify it. But then they later go, wow, you could really tell that that's me in that story. I'd like this removed. Mm -hmm. so we know what to go remove. <laughs> what what piece do we need to get out of there? Yeah. Right. So um, thinking well, about- Well, we could give numbers. You know, you can identify, you know, yeah. name and a number. Yeah. So, um, and, and that's something I'm comfortable with. I could write up that sort of like- Right. How. Yeah. This um, is how we're going to do it. Well, we, we would share that with the informants then too. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. You're going to become a number, <laughs> yep. and that's your protection. Yeah, right. Unless they want to, you know, unless they want to have their yeah, name right, as part of well. right. Um, right. The other part, like we could store things. We can store the data. I don't believe there's a data cap, so I mean, we should be fine with whatever files we come out with. Mm -hmm. um, I'll work with Noah a little bit because they've um, interacted with the city on like having a space on the website, and I've got an email out already to. Um, the solicitor and um, to the mayor about sort of like with um, how we could make things publicly available. Is there any limit to what we what we do for information that we share out? Um, just to make sure all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed. Um, yeah. So that's already underway. Um, we do have the ability to just um, as a body to determine what we expect in terms of anonymity. So. Um, are there consent? Do we just want to say <laughs> anyone who asks to be anonymous can be anonymous? Do we want to say that there's a threshold? And if there's a threshold, um, you know, do they have to cite why? Do we need that? Um, I'll be honest, I'm not super comfortable being like the arbiter of like the arbiter of need for anonymity um, because it's such a subjective thing if we're interpreting right. <laughs> um, that. But at the same time, you know, we do have to balance transparency and accountability. So what are the ways that we want to do that? Yeah, just asking people, how do you want to be known here? Given, yeah. given, given, given that, uh, what were the three points, Javier, that this is going to become a public record, that it will be sh stored? Stored. And, and what was the third one? record store uh and either read played mm -hmm. publicly right 
because fully recover becomes like as this. This is this is uh, this is at the end of the day will become public record because we would would be uploaded to the city's website. Blah blah blah. Right would be kept, but um, whatever they do will not become public record until it's read, mm-hmm. played in front of the the the, the, the uh, full commission or subcommittee. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, we we need to be extremely transparent with them. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 we may think that mentioning public record should be enough, but we want to be really explicit that this will be read in meetings that you know may be ten people, may there may be a hundred and forty people. Mm-hmm. So I think as as much as we do that, the better. Even though you know because we're gonna do it there are people who are ended up after reading that list they may opt out of it but and 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 i and i do agree with you carol that as long as anybody wants to be anonymous they can just opt into it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and 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 one of the things that we need to do it's to be able to to keep that that balance is to address the fact what you you dan said about the narrative and what at the end of the day why would they need to to be in a better situation to not don't do not feel threatened to not have to run you know mm-hmm. uh, be harassed and all that i think that's 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 a way to put it that it's gonna be really specific for them because you know people people who are facing injustices they get really clear what they need mm-hmm. and they uh, and they know they know what they don't need um so i think i'm pretty hopeful about that but again uh, from my point of view this comes down to having an extremely clear based document Mm -hmm. that we can give to people working on this gathering this this uh testimonies and they can go with that and and we're gonna have to review it after a month we're gonna have to review it again Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think the only thing to to note that i because I, I like the idea of asking questions. I just want to be really, because we don't ask questions of the public comments. Right. Um, and so like, I mean, I think we should still preface what we're doing um, mm-hmm. because, you know, the people at the public comment period, if they've joined Zoom, they know, they've heard us speak, they know sort of what we're doing. And even if they've never joined before, you know, they get that preamble of who we are. <laughs> Um, and they hear other people's comments as well. Um, and that helps them formulate their own. So I think I'm just, I'm worried that if we, yeah, I'm worried. I'm always worried about bias and I never have good answers. (laughs) Um, if you see me mulling over which way, um, which way a scale should go. (laughs) <laughs> going back one, and forth. one to ten or ten to one yeah yeah because you know no matter what you do yeah. whatever way the left hand is always the bias right mm-hmm. um and it happens no matter what and so but like the same thing with how we ask how we frame these it's going to bias the responses um maybe not in a significant way <laughs> um but just just thinking about how we can do it where there's the least amount of influence while still giving them enough information to know what we're about um and what you know what the purview of this group is mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well you know that raises a question for me before i draft this one pager um i don't have any problem with with doing a, a really introductory several sentences about why we're seeking testimony in the community, why we're reaching out. But is there any way in which you would like um, the purpose of the commission, like the charge of the larger commission in there? Because that that does dip it towards, that that is biasing. I, th- I think if we say this commission exists because of r- earlier activism in the city decided that they really wanted to examine they wanted a commission to examine um the budget and you know alternative uses of police or getting police out of the picture you know i i i'm not sure i'm entirely comfortable being very explicit about that because i think it's biasing because then everybody jumps on and says 
okay, defund everything. So, yeah. t two things. So, I would be careful. Mm hmm. I would so I would be careful to over worrying about what you guys are calling bias, right? Mm. You know, um, we can come with the best question ever, mm -hmm. and we're still gonna find people <laughs> who can complain about it. Mm -hmm. um, and two, Carol, and 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 I may be wrong on this, so just correct me if I'm wrong. So, I wrote in the in in the last. <laughs> Because we were the only subcommittee that show an actual document, right? Um, everybody yeah. saw yeah. the intro that I wrote, mm -hmm. right? Or, or technically, everybody should have had seen, been able to see the intro that I wrote. And I talk about, and and I even add links to the meetings, the budget meetings, and all what happened. So I would assume that by now, that was a week ago. Mm -hmm. we would have heard feedback from our fellow, fellow commissioners yeah. Yeah. in relationship to, oh, I don't feel that that, con that sort of encapsulate why we were created. So what I would say is that if you want to take a look to that and draw okay. from there, yeah. because yeah. It's, it's the only sort of piece of document that I'm conscious sure. that yeah. talks a little bit more about the context. And I'm assuming that everybody saw it because, you know, we spent almost an entire meeting talking about our document. Mm -hmm. So... As long as I, I we can say that the entire commission was fine with it, I mm -hmm. wouldn't be worried about any bias outside the commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Dan just uh, put the, so I just the, put the in the um, charge. Yeah, so that's just the charge from the the city. Um, so it, I mean, if we wanted to include that, or just says that it's you know the city council and the mayor wanted this review. Um, but it does say it's um, a sweeping public policy review and community conversation about policing and public safety. All right. Community conversation. There we are. <laughs> um, and then um, I'm missing the sweeping, though. Yeah, um. <laughs> sweeping. Um, but to, to have that, like, I mean, there's more to it if we wanted to pull from it. But I also think that that's mm -hmm. um, that's enough. Yeah, and I mean, there's a paragraph above as well where it's um, talking about like the tragic events, um, but that hundreds of Northampton residents have called upon their elected leaders to rethink the city's approach to policing, rethink whether and what policing services could be delivered by others and rethink how we structure and fund community safety moving forward. So I think that that's another, you know, like any yeah. of those, like that- Any any of that, those phrases are helpful, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I also would be careful, I mean, this kind of interview should no go longer than, uh, uh, well, depend the person the the, inter the person who is being interviewed can just talk and talk, but we should not have this sort of uh, <clears throat> um, big paragraph about contextualizing. I don't think that it's useful for somebody doing that the interview. Mm -hmm. um, you may get somebody more confused. Yeah, that's true. Then, then <laughs> very and, true and, because and, they yeah mm -hmm. they may want to be helpful and try to figure out how to spin it. Yeah, yeah. the the Hawthorne effect, right? But yeah, like, right. The Hawthorne effect of interviewing. Yeah. <laughs> but thinking so, so, about um, but thinking about this, I do think that we do need to have some statement in there to say who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, at least because, <sighs> and, and it's it's clear that some people that are offering public comment don't know what. The commission is or how it was formed mm -hmm. they just see True. policing review and you know there were people like why did you cut the budget and so, well we didn't and um you know yeah. what do you have like what do you, did you have like a project plan in place for that like well we, we didn't do it mm -hmm. <laughs> um or someone that was asked like asking us not to um not to lock up a specific individual it's like we, yeah. <laughs> you know where it's like like something to at least contextualize and say, we like we're a pardoning, we're a group that can pardon everybody, right? <laughs> yeah. So like to just have it be like, at least give them some background of who we are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be super contextual. It could be just one of those sentences, any of those sentences. Yeah. Um, but just something in there that says, this is this is why we are talking to you. <laughs> yeah. And in, 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 I, I absolutely agree. And in, in going back a little bit to the bios stuff, what we're seeing 
with these kind of issues, it's not as much bias as just plainly confirmation bias. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. just having their judgment and just taking whatever fits their judgment and just leaving everything out. So I, 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 I'm saying this because I find that we should not take that in account mm -hmm. at all. We should try to do our best and our best is going to be enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Rogers or philosophy bit, we should just try it. Cool. So I want to do a time check. It's 8.51. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to open the floor a little bit for Patrick or Yaping. If you uh, have any comment for us, I want to be able to allocate the last five minutes to be clear with what we're uh, with the date of the next meeting. We already know that we're going to divide the next meeting in two. Uh, we're going to be doing outreach, uh, not outreach, but uh, sort of searching organizations that we would like to get to the table to. We would report that back in the first part of the meeting. In the second part of the meeting, we would workshop the document that Carol is going to start. So if Patrick or Yaping want to talk, feel free to raise your hand. We're going to move now to um, talking about next date. Uh, mm -hmm. Dan, when is the next full commission meeting? Uh, the next full commission meeting is Tuesday the 5th. Uh, sorry, January, January the 5th. Okay. Um, and then the next, the following week is the week of the 12th, um, which is usually when the subcommittees meet. So if we wanted to meet that week, um, or we could meet the week of the 5th, um, except for the seventh because that the fifth and the seventh because we have the general commission meeting and then also the um on the seventh i have the presentation to the commission or to the city council for the commission's preliminary report so oh my goodness yes so do we want and there's an alternative oh, yeah. sorry oh, sorry go ahead carol uh monday the fourth from 10 to 1 alternative subcommittee Meeting two. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, policing uh, policies and services services committee meeting on the twelfth from seven till eight thirty. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about Monday eleventh? That works for me. Looks uh, good. For me. Same time. It works for me. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So next. I want to say thank you. I want to. I want to. Uh, I'm very grateful for this time frame. Uh, it permits me to do my my dinner um, responsibility with my husband. So it's it's perfect for me. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So. No, I'm going to send you probably tomorrow the agenda, okay? Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, is there anything else, uh, Dan, Carol, that you would like to say before we adjourn? No, I guess we ought to just be all of us thinking about um, organizations. Yeah. And, and having think, our, yeah. I think also thinking about the ways that we want to to do to reach out to folks too because i'm imagining in person through these other people um like we could have i mean we could set up a little table like the COVID ambassadors <laughs> and uh -huh. I don't mind i'll sit out in the cold for a little bit um and reach out to people but also like if we wanted to do things you know do we want to have a survey um as well and how we want to do that um so a digital space in addition to a physical one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Anoa. Javier. Yep. Dan. Yes. Carol. Yes. It's my favorite one thus far. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, yes. we're. I'll tell you, Javier, you keep it. Yep. You, keep, <laughs> you keep the organization. Yeah, you. It's good. Uh, without without shutting anybody off, it's 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 an impressive impressive act.
Okay. Cool. Take care, you guys. Take care, you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.